afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. This afternoon, we are bringing you live all the fun, all the excitement of the annual Pet Rock Convention here at, appropriately enough, Rockefeller Center. We are surrounded here by the beloved pet rocks of the members of the Federated Geological, Geological Society, known as the Jolly Jeep. Pet rocks from every corner of the globe have been entered. No stone has been left unturned. Pet rocks have been entered from the Appalachians to the Alps, from Tanganyika to Timbuktu. A highlight of the show will be the naming of the Pet Rock of the Year, with the winner receiving an all-expense-paid trip to the Rock of Gibraltar. We will also feature a rare television appearance by the Pet Rock owned by R.D. Sutton, a rock found in the rubble of the Great Sphinx of Egypt. Yes, the Sphinx, that fabulous monster with the body of a lion and the head and torso of a man. And we will be meeting one of its descendants today. I understand the Sutton Pet Rock is just now another pebble on the beach. Yes, I can't wait to see her turn out. Yes, and ladies and gentlemen, we are surrounded here by Pet Rock lovers. And what is a Pet Rock? It is a perfect companion for a man or woman allergic to cats or dogs or plants. The perfect companion for someone with a heart of stone. It is just right for those not allowed to have a pet. The more than one million proud Pet Rock owners who never have to worry about violating the law, never have to clean up messes, never fear that their pet will keep the neighbors awake at night. Well, Miss Nancer, Pet Rock can keep you awake at night. Really? Of course. Take our little Peter, for instance. He's still very young, only the size of a pebble. We had a terrible cold and greatly throat last week. He was up for three nights coughing. Don't you hear rocks cough? Yes. And I hear bells and whistles and hoot owls. And I see ostriches. Big purple dancing ostriches. I'm an ostrich. <laughs>
She says that by accident, a valuable geological specimen from Egypt had accidentally been set to the town pet shop. The rock I bought was actually a piece of the Egyptian sphinx. Don't remind me. There must have been a dozen newspaper articles about it. Priceless rocks sold as pets. We haven't had a moment's peace since. But did you ever see how she sparkles in the sunlight? Why, she looks just like a little cluster of diamonds. Oh, diamonds indeed. They're pieces of quartz. We shouldn't have to come to this convention. We should get rid of that rock. Put her out the pasture, the garden, or something. Get rid of Petronella? Never. Why, she's as steady as, as a rock. What about Robin? All the other sales are made terrible puns. I'm the laughing stock of the company. Hey, there goes Tom Sutton. He got a Bronx in his head. <laughs> I'll tell you, something's got to be done about the obsession with his rock. My goodness, Uncle Abner's in Europe. What does Uncle Abner have to do with any of this? You seem to have forgotten that I'm Uncle Abner's favorite nephew. He's considering making me a full-time partner in his oil business. <clears throat> My nephew, Tom Sutton. Now, there's a solid-minded young man. Stability and all that, yes sirree. Give me one man with his two feet planted solidly on the ground, right on top of an oil well. If Uncle Abner finds out that I become stepfather to a rock, he'll disown me. I never thought about that. The more I think about it, the more nervous I get about all this publicity. Let's get out of here before it's too late. You? It's too late. What am I going to have to I almost lost you both. We were worried about that. And such excited police are swarming everywhere. Police? Haven't you heard? The slope diamond is missing. That's awful. It was sold to a New York dealer and was on display in this hotel. Why are the police? Are they bodyguards or something? No, the slope diamond was stolen under their very noses. It was on display in the rainbow room and one of the attendants just found the case smashed. How terrible. It's great news. I phoned the story to my editor. Can't leave even if we try. No, not a chance. The police think that the robber is still in the hotel. Why would you want to leave? This pet rock business is just too much for me. But you're a celebrity, the owner of a famous pet rock, a descendant from the Egyptian Sphinx. Who cares? After this convention, your name will be a household word. Who cares? I don't want any publicity. You can't avoid it. My editor told me that Pro Professor Ogilvy is coming in from the State University, and she has a statement about your rock that will make headlines. More publicity? I love pet rocks. Can I see yours now? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's too soon to disturb her. The man in the pet shop said, you know, those pet rocks, they need their rest after such long, tiring trips. That guy had rocks in his head, too. <laughs> Don't rock the boat. I'm only following instructions. But I guess I could take the lid off. But I did bring some extra copies of the Rolling Stone, just in case she has an accident. <laughs> She's a beauty. Good, good, good. good afternoon, Petronella. How are you? Let me show you how strongly I feel about little Petronella. There, I think she's quite comfortable now. What's the clock for? Well, you know that man in the pet shop. He said. The ticking of an alarm clock is very soothing, and pet rocks just love it. So does Petronella. Do you have a difficulty with your feeding? My pet rock purchaser won't eat a thing. Well, every morning I sprinkle Petronella with rock minerals and rock salt. She needs her minerals, you know, but she still can't digest solid food yet. Audrey, I'm warning you. Oh, and if she's getting <laughs> sleep well, I reward her by playing her favorite music composer on the stereo. Oh, who's that? Uh. Where's that TV crew? History is being made in here, and they're off chasing after some diamonds or some useless stone like that. Oh, I'm sorry, Petronella. I didn't mean to say that about your relatives. TV cameras, a major convention, reporters. I can't believe any of this. It's okay, Petronella. Come along, baby. It's time for your exercise. Exercise? You didn't tell me about that. Well, um, yeah, I've enrolled Petronella in obedience school. She just loves meeting all the other rocks. And how much has all this enjoyment cost me? <laughs> Feasible enough, it's only cost $500. Oh, 
Five hundred dollars? <laughs> yeah, that's my commission for five sales. But look at all the things she can do. She can sit and heal and roll over. <laughs> do you expect me to believe any of that? Yeah, I'll show you. Petronella will come forward any time I command it. Petronella, come. You see that? She's a lot closer to me now. <laughs> Petronella didn't move forward. You move backwards. And you just don't have any imagination. Here, I'll show you another one. She will heal anytime I say heal. Ready? Heal. See? You're the one who's moving. No, I actually saw Petronella move. Sorry. That's a good girl. Daddy just doesn't understand you. <laughs> Daddy? Thank you, young lady. And this must be Petronella, a rare prize indeed. 
How do you do, Professor? You telephoned me about Petronella's ancestry. What a momentous occasion. The mere presence of this stony souvenir from long ago makes me tremble with excitement. We are on the threshold of history. Wow. Oh. Uh, Professor Ogilvy, world famous rock connoisseur, can you mean that Petronella's presence on this show could affect the course of history? You have heard of the riddle of the Sphinx, haven't you? Of course. It has mystified people for ages. The riddle is the wonder of the ages. Once every century it is reported that the great Sphinx recites the riddle, then remains silent for another hundred years. Oh, my Petronella is going to say her very first words. A talking pet rock. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll hear the riddle of the Sphinx from Petronella's very own lips. She has got lips, doesn't she? Well, um, she's never said anything before, but, um, there are, there's a little indentation there where her lips should be. It just doesn't get common to do much trouble. You'll be the most famous woman in the world. I don't want to be famous. I just want to be a good parent to my pet rock. You know what they say about the hand that rocks the cradle. I mean, cradle's the rock. Professor Ogilvy, why don't the pet rock speak? If my calculations are correct, the Sphinx should speak in exactly 15 minutes. We don't have much time. We have to make sure this is covered by satellite. We need more cameras, more tables, more worldwide coverage. Call the network. Call the president! Petronella is going to speak. And we have to get you ready for the camera. There's a makeup kit in the back. Okay, we have to get out of here fast. Come on. What's wrong, Tom? That was Uncle Abner on the phone. He decided to come back unexpectedly from his business trip. He read those ridiculous newspaper articles on the plane. He's fuming. Well, what did he say? He said something about doubting my stability, my sanity and my true footedness although if I repeat his exact words, I'd be rated X. Occasionally, none of this rock is, is my fault. I'll probably lose the partnership and my life. Um, well, is he coming here? I don't want to meet us here. What? But, uh, but I'm losing my nerve fast. Let's get out of here. I can't face him. But I can't leave now. Petronella is about to speak. Who cares whether Petronella is going Picture, I was going to speak. Yeah, I can't believe it either. My head is spinning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. You've been in the clubs for days. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom, but I'm not leaving without Petronella. Listen, we're just going to mingle with the crowd a little bit and try to find the back exit. The cops won't let anyone out the front way. Why did those confounded robbers have to steal this little diamond today? I'm not leaving without Petronella. Come on. Mm -hmm. I'm missing as soon as I stole it. Imagine, 50 huge uncut diamonds in this dirty rock. We're going to be on top of the rock pile. Please catch your goods now. I told you this was a bad caper. Oh, sure. So you know all the answers. Up to Mimi, the girl who sees all. Knows all. I should have known better than to tie up with you. Well, we can't leave the hotel until the heat's off. And we can't carry that thing around. It's a dead giveaway. I mean, we can only stash until the coast is clear. Hey, what kind of place do you think this is, anyway? Looks crazy if you ask me. I guess it's a display of some kind. Venerated Geological Society. A man's religion really makes no difference to me. <laughs> Maybe it's a little convention. Do you think it's one of those commercial groups? Maybe. You can't trust anyone these days. But all these rocks. I have a great idea. My brain is working. Impossible. Guys, right, listen. What's the best place to hide a rock? That's what I'd like to know. We'll hide the slope then with the rest of these rocks. Of course! You mean here? In plain sight? It's worth a chance. Haven't you ever heard of Edgar Allan Poe? Was he not check forger from Schenectady? No, that was Seeger's <laughs> Poe. Edgar Allan Poe wrote short stories and poems, real weirdo stuff. Well, he turned out a story about a letter, a guy wanting to hide it. So what did he do? He mailed it with a lot of letters. Nobody ever thought of looking for it with other letters. So we should mail the slope diamond to ourselves? No, no. We'll hide it with one of these rocks. Take that one, for instance. It's about the same size as those diamonds stuck with, with all those fancy little stones. Nobody will ever notice the difference. Sounds risky if you ask me. It's a risk we have to take. If we're set up for another rock, they'll give us a one-way ticket. There, the diamond's safe. We'll pick it up later. <clears throat> Mamie, I really have to hand it to you. Your brain does work every once in a while. Thanks, and the girl always likes compliment. We'll hide in there until the police leave. I hope we won't have too much trouble getting a slope down back. No one will stop us. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen of the TV audience, we'll return to the Grand Ballroom where the world famous Sphinx Rock will speak to the world. Tell me, you can't get out of here. Oh, I'm glad. I simply couldn't deserve Petronella. Audrey, I'm warning you. <laughs> Something's wrong with Petronella. She looks so tired. Say a while. No, Mom, I'm serious. I'm pretty sure that Petronella is seriously ill. Ill? Did someone say that Petronella is ill? Yes, Professor. Look at her. She looks so disconsolate and lusterless. This is terrible. Terrible. Quick, I must take her pulse. No, her pulse is normal. Thank goodness for that. Now to check her respiration. I told you you should have taken out pet rock insurance. I don't want to think about it. But my company pays up to 60 days in a semi private gravel bed with even outpatient care. My pet rock was the same way a few weeks ago. She came out with chips and erosion. That's terrible. <laughs> it was a mild thing. Besides, she isn't what she used to be. She's so old. She used to dance with the Rockettes. Oh, I hope Petronella's okay. She's never been sick before. My pet rock was involved for three days before he found out what was ailing her. What was wrong? She's now the proud parent of three little pebbles. <laughs> Just as I suspected, Petronella has had an attack of gallstones. <gasps> we better cover her up before she becomes petrified. She'll be all right, I'm sure. Petronella has a case of laryngitis. It's a common ailment with pet rocks. That's why they don't speak too often. Laryngitis? If Petronella's lost her voice, she won't be able to speak today. Laryngitis? Laryngitis? What's all this about laryngitis? That <coughs> stupid rock can't speak. The now will with a bundle. We'll sue the Suttons for fraud. But you can't do that. We didn't do anything wrong. The network spends a fortune to bring this telecast to the world, Mr. Sutton. If that rock is sick, it's all your fault. They make you look terrible, isn't it? Go. Stop it. Unhand me, you dumb idiot. <laughs> Don't tell me my business. I know how to deal with you. You're definitely the criminal type I'm looking for. I found this old codger trying to break into the hotel. He says his nephew's up here. Hi, Uncle Abner. Uncle Abner. You're looking well. I know, but what's my life? What's going on here anyways? <laughs> well, uh, well, you never believe it. You see, well, we bought a pet rock and then... Yes, yes, I read that nonsense in the paper. Well, you see, Petronella's a pedigree pet, and things kind of got out of hand. But she's your grandniece, you know. Are you responsible for this? Um, well, uh, she's about to say the word on the Sphinx. You better take me to headquarters. Everybody's crazy here. <laughs> no, 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 Uncle Emmer. Don't worry, everything will be all right. After Petronella recovers from Prairie Jets. <laughs> 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 it's obvious that you know nothing about Pet Rock. All they they're a lovable, gentle pet. All they require is a little understanding and attention. Under no, oh, under no circumstances to turn your pet rat loose. These, the world is already overcrowded with unwanted rocks, and millions of small stray each year. These poor rocks in rural ends and roadbeds and cement mixers. I'm warning you, you better get me out of here. I'll confess to anything if you let me out of this smutty place. They <laughs> can't arrest you. They haven't done anything wrong. Oh no, don't you try to help me. You're as bad as the rest. No one ever mind ever played with pet rocks. What about our partnership? Partnership? Ha! The only partnership I offer you is an equal share in the gravel pit. <gasps> Petronella! Are you okay? Try saying a chorus of gravel by a baby. That would excuse my pet when she falls down the boat's boom. Of course, when she landed on my sister's foot, she sang a different tune. <laughs> hey, look! One of her little stones has fallen out. It's really shiny. Let me see that thing. I think this is the missing slope diamond, right? <gasps> Stand by for new developments, folks. Nighty Night Madness is bringing you all the action. Not to be tough, buddy. I'm throwing you into the plank, too. You can spend the rest of your life sleeping on a Nighty Night Madness. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right, officer. That isn't Petronella. But wh where is my pet rock? Oh, I know. Maybe she went for a little pet <coughs> hot walk. I'm warning you, I won't stand for any nonsense. I'm, I'm serious. Something's wrong. Petronella's been rock now. We'll settle this entire matter at headquarters. Everyone here is under arrest. I'm taking the slope diamond along with Edwards. What a story. Federated Geological Society sent to rock pile. Here come on, too. What? <laughs> <laughs> I protest. You see, I am a member of the press. Press and yeah, okay, you'll get that in the prison laundry <laughs> Diamond. 